Hey, Tom. Hey. Nice to going, see you Sophie? again. Yeah, good to see you again, too. Take your seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom, in only two weeks' time, Legion is going to be launched. Uh, right. Now, maybe you want to share a little bit more about the storyline of Legion with us? Yeah, well, I mean, Legion has a massive storyline that involves a ton of different characters and subplots and main plots, but really, at the end of the day, it's all about the Legion coming to Azeroth. It's something that happened back in Warcraft 3, Reign of Chaos, but now we're going to see it again. This is the biggest invasion they've ever launched against Azeroth. They're ready to just go all in on, on destroying humanity, the Horde, Lovely. Alliance, all of them. <laughs> Should be really exciting. You know, we've got Gul'dan as one of the primary characters that is really kind of acting as the, the conduit for bringing the Legion back to Azeroth. Then, of course, you know, players are going to have to uncover the different pillars of creation to fight back against the Legion. And they're also going to enlist the services of Illidan, who's really a primary character. Awesome. So a lot of stuff coming our way. Now, you guys recently released a Harbinger series. Um, right. Maybe you want to tell us what those are about? Yeah, the Harbinger series was really designed to kind of go into more detail on a couple of the main characters that, that are part of this expansion. We had Khadgar, we have Illidan, and of course, we also have Gul'dan. So we get to learn a lot more about Gul'dan's background, you know, what caused Gul'dan to be Gul'dan. We learn more about uh, Archmage Khadgar and his history and some of the things that he's doing in response to the Legion coming back to Azeroth. And then, of course, we learn more about Illidan and his whole storyline and, and why it is that he's so central to this expansion. Now, you are prepared. So, hi, Ian and Lewis. Thanks a lot for joining me here as well. We just talked to Tom about the storyline of Legion. Now, since I have you two guys here, maybe let's talk a bit about the content coming with Legion. And boy, is there a lot of it. I feel like every time we're always saying, this is our biggest expansion ever. And, well, this is. Um, this, aside from the standard stuff like leveling to level 110, having a whole new continent to explore, the Broken Isles with its many zones, new dungeons, new raids, we have a wide array of new features, right? So we have artifact weapons that every single player can seek out for their own class, for their own specialization, 36 in all to track down with their own story, their own background, the ability to level them up to customize them, and to have them grow with you as you fight against the Legion. We have the Demon Hunter class. We've been talking about doing Demon Hunter for such a long time, and when it came down to this expansion, we said to ourselves, well, if we're ever gonna make this class, if we're ever gonna bring this hero class that's this iconic part of the Warcraft universe into World of Warcraft, Legion has to be the expansion to do it, and we're so happy with how it turned out. But getting back to features of Legion, because I can just keep going. <laughs> Go um, for it, I'm, we not, have, I'm not stopping. <laughs> we have World Quests, are a brand new feature that okay. makes use of the entire outdoor world. The entire continent of the Broken Isles will scale to match players' level, such that when you hit level 110, rather than just having a small piece of a few zones that feels relevant still, the entire world of the Broken Isles remains relevant. We have literally hundreds of World Quests that are randomly chosen on a daily basis such that you might play the game and quest for weeks without seeing all of them or even feeling like you've seen all of them. And the scaling actually applies to everything, not just world quests. So if there's a side quest that you missed or a treasure that you missed or even a rare encounter that you missed while leveling up, if you go do that content at max level, it will off scale with your level and basically offer a reward that's you know viable for where you're at in the progression. Exactly, and as you're leveling up through the zones as well, the fact that they scale means that you can choose your own path through the four level up zones as you work your way to the max level zone of Suramar. If you want to start in Val Shurah, but your friend starts in Stormheim, you can do that, then you can both meet up and quest in High Mountain. Doesn't matter if your friend's gotten ahead of you, you've fallen behind, the, the entire world allows for people to play together and choose their own path to level more than ever before. Well, players as prime exponents of their particular class they go and get their artifact, which basically makes them a complete badass. If I'm a paladin, I get the Ashbringer. And basically, after that, they lead other heroes of that same class into a super epic campaign. And each campaign is custom to the class. So if you're the type of player that likes to play a lot of alts, here's a ton of content that you get to do with, you know, Warlock campaign is completely different than the Paladin campaign, which is completely different than the Mage campaign, which is something we've never ever done in an expansion and should provide content to players who haven't seen this type of stuff before. That yeah. sounds like a lot And there's more. Of course there is of more. Course. We have a scaling mythic dungeon system at max level 
that basically allows for our dungeons to scale up in difficulty to basically match player skill. If you defeat a dungeon and you can beat it within a certain time limit, you get to access the same dungeon on a harder difficulty and harder and harder and harder with additional random modifiers mixed in such that you know, maybe enemies leave damaging pools on the ground when you defeat them, or when they reach low health, they enrage, or you have to separate them, or you have to bring them together, and you'll have to approach the dungeon differently depending on which modifiers are in play. And all of this, I think, brings us back to a solid commitment to five-player dungeon gameplay, which is something that in some ways I think has been neglected over the years in favor of raids. We think that's some of the best gameplay that MMOs have to offer and that World of Warcraft has to offer, and we're super excited to finally have a way for dungeons to scale, remain relevant, and provide a true parallel path of progression for raiding at Endgame. It, that's not even all. <laughs> if you're the type of player that likes professions, for example, we've taken a slightly different approach to this expansion where uh, you don't just get new recipes that, you know, if you're a blacksmith, you know, the tailor can't make. You also get content that tailors won't see. So specifically, quests involving your profession, quests that send you around the world to interact with specific NPCs, to develop your uh, skills as a profession type player. And other stuff, if you're a PvP player, we have a whole new PvP system where you have PvP specific talents. So in the past, uh, kind of doing that balancing act between tuning skills for PvE versus PvP has kind of tied our hands a little bit. Now with this new PvP system, we have uh, very custom made abilities for PvP players and they'll be able to advance through that tree and select specific skills. And for sort of the really hardcore PvP players, they'll be able to prestige and do it multiple times for cosmetic rewards so you can show off what a badass PvPer you are. And speaking of showing <laughs> off, um, if showing off World in World of Warcraft is your thing, we have a revamp and an overhaul of our transmogrification system where players can collect and permanently learn all the different appearances of the items they gather on their main character and their other characters so that all those hundreds of pieces of armor, thousands even, that you may have gathered across the years in World of Warcraft, whether they're from old raids, whether as a paladin, as you wield your Ashbringer, you want to look like you're wearing tier two judgment armor from Blackwing Lair in 2005, that's a thing you can do. Um, the transmog system opens up this whole world of collection and lets players really customize their appearance in a way that's convenient and lets them show off their character's identity and what they've accomplished in the world like never before. Speaking of customization, we have some incredible customization options in Legion. Specifically, artifacts. You can unlock specific super badass looks customized to your artifact of choice to the, the, for the spec that you've chosen. And a lot of them are based on very prestige achievements. So if you're a PvPer, you might have unlocked an appearance that uh, a raider might not have and vice versa. Also under customizations, I want to talk a little bit about the Demon Hunter customizations. Players might be familiar with how we introduce Death Knight specific skins for the Death Knight hero class. So Demon Hunters have that plus much more. Players will be able to choose anywhere from being a traditional elf all the way to being very demonic looking, complete with horns, demonic skins, tattoos, and other options that are Demon Hunter only. It's basically the most uh, customization we've ever put into any race class combination, and we think players are really, really gonna like it. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. It feels like Christmas came really early this year. <laughs> it has so much yeah. content I'm to I'm sorry, that's all to. Legion has to offer. Oh, like, is that I'm all? Yeah. Oh, what a disappointment. <laughs> but no, seriously. I feel like we're is, forgetting something. This, this is, you probably <laughs> We probably did. are, you actually. probably are, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's actually mind-blowing. There's so much content, but is there anything left to look forward to after the Legion launch then? We have a great story to tell in Legion, and that story just begins with the expansion itself, with patch 7.0. There are new places to visit, new enemies to defeat, new rewards to earn. So that is a lot of content coming our way with Legion, but what's there for the players right now? Well, so yes, I mean, on the live servers right now, people who have pre-purchased Legion can jump right in, make their Demon Hunter. They can play through the Demon Hunter start experience and begin gearing up to take the fight directly to the Legion on August 30th. There's the Broken Shore introductory experience where you know, the forces of the Alliance and the Horde lead a frontal assault on the Legion invasion at the Tomb of Sargeras on the Broken Shore. Spoilers, that might not go so well, but it sets the <laughs> stage. I know, it would be a very short expansion, um, but it sets the stage for everything that's going to follow. And of course, the Legion invasion of Azeroth is in full swing right now. And if you log on, you'll see demon invasions happening around the world. You can rally to defend major areas like Westfall, like the Barrens that the Legion is assaulting, and earn rewards and customizations in the process. Yeah, like Ian said, if you pre-purchase Legion right now, 
you can roll a demon hunter and basically play through their own custom starting area. Uh, players that are familiar with the Death Knight hero class, basically demon hunters receive a, a similar treatment. Uh, players that are familiar with Illidan uh, will know that he was a, you know, a very powerful villain during the Burning Crusade. And playing through that starting area, we'll, we'll begin to see what that rationale was, how demon hunters had their own worldview that differed from players at the time, how we bring them from being villains from Burning Crusade all the way to being allies in Legion expansion. They will stop at nothing to destroy our world. And we will sacrifice everything to save it. All right, so that sounds amazing. Also, I love those kind of world events. Like we had, I think the first one was Ankaraya or something where that happens. So that always gets yeah, me so excited to be exactly. part of something like yeah. that. Definitely not something to miss. What are you guys having in store for us at Gamescom this year? I think we're holding one of the biggest Warcraft parties anywhere. Uh, we have <laughs> the Legion Cafe in the heart of Cologne, where for the, over the course of five days during Gamescom, we're gonna have a wide array of events, community activities, WoW-themed food, live streaming, all kinds of decorations. If you want to go and feel like you are a part of Legion, like you are standing at the helm of a Demon Hunter command ship, show up to the Legion Cafe in Cologne this week. Yeah, if you play through the Demon Hunter Star experience, you'll know that when you finish it, you take over a ship, Legion ship known as the Fellhammer. So we've recreated the Fellhammer, complete with decorations and all sorts of stuff for you to check out. Oh God, that sounds so amazing. Definitely something to check out. Now guys, thank you so much for having a quick chat with me. And uh, are you guys gonna be at Gamescom this year as well? Of course. Of course. Absolutely, <laughs> we're gonna miss it for the world.